just get my... Sheehan, Terry Burkett. Os. <laughs> Senpai Scott, Hene. <laughs> Is it Hene or Hene? Uh, neither, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's Hene. It's not Hene? No. Hene. It's like Hene. Hene. Yeah. It's got Hene. Because I always... It's funny, you know when you've had like a mate and you know someone. I did the same with my other mate, uh, Mark Howes, Hose. Like, I've known mm. him for years. I know him as Mark. Right. I've never said his surname. Right. I don't know how to say his surname. I know how it's written. And it's the same with yours, really. I know it's written, but I've never heard you say it. Yeah, well, we don't usually say it. Um, and 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 it's even even that has changed, right? Because when my family came home from Ireland, it was O'Haney. So the, it, oh, the, o, yeah. the, the O got dropped. <laughs> along the way oh. and then uh, along the way it got also changed too and there's a there's a um a celtic version of it too which i can't even remember now but yeah. anyway yeah i think burkett burkett's old english with a little bit of french origin in it oh yeah i remember you when you did your your, your dna test that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah 85 pounds got it got it right down to britain and europe <laughs> I'm from there, pinpointed. I know mine was the same way. It was so boring. It was like like eighty something percent uh, Northern Irish Celtic, <laughs> and like yeah. a little, and a little bit Viking because they got co- conquered there or whatever. Or the Vikings came you over. You were like, it. yeah, you're, you're you're mainly English, Welsh, Scottish. <laughs> All right, am I great? You know, I was expecting you to tell me I've got like three percent in Pekingese in me or something. Well, I, mine was fun for a while, so I found out. I was one. Per, uh, this one stuck. One percent Russian, but there was also See, there was none of that in mine. No percentages of, of different people. Oh, really? No, mine was one percent Russian, and I had uh, like a one percent of Indian uh, from India. I was so excited. I was like dropping that card everywhere. <laughs> no more cultural <laughs> so, so, appropriation. So, so if someone's like, "Oh, my computer's just crashed," I can sort that out for you. I'd be sorting that out for you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> but. The next, then they did a, uh, an update on it, and I, I don't know if it was a mistake or something. It was gone. I was so let down. Oh, I, I think like, they, oh, I shit love- up. they just make this shit up. They look at your Facebook profile and go, <laughs> "Oh, he looks, at, he looks a bit dark." I think he's got a bunch of I, Indian yeah. friends. <laughs> yeah, fifteen percent Indian. Oh, he's been to Spain. Yeah, two percent Spanish. They just make it up. That's funny that you say that because there was a bit of Spanish in there, and I have been to Spain. I spent a lot of time in Spain. <laughs> I think of mine was English, English, Welsh, Irish. And that's it. Made no, a little bit of Northern Europe. Like, no percentages. There's, back, there's got to be a bit of Viking in me. There's got to be a percentage there of it. If not, we can arrange to have a little Viking in you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my line when I'm away. It's like, oh, have you, have you got any Welsh in you? Would you like some? <laughs> Would you like some Welsh in you? <laughs> anyway, get on with the show. Episode number 34. 34. We're yeah. almost halfway to a Decca episode. I am boiling here, kids. Scott's the sun's already pouring in. in about the heat. Oh my God. But I found out something extraordinary. I am here complaining because it's like, whatever, 30 something degrees, but I'm sitting right where the sun is coming down. And as I've mentioned before, and I found out Terry is 30 degrees with no AC. <laughs> We don't have AC in this country. <laughs> That's hilarious. I did and not know I, that. I see, and I don't think people from odd countries do because I see it all the time online, and they're like, "Oh my god, thirty degrees! That's not odd. That's an average winter for us." And it's like, "Well, listen, you go from AC building to the car to another AC building. <laughs> you, you're basically just jumping in and out of ovens. That's all you're doing. <laughs> jumping in and out of ovens. That's all you're doing. And at the end of the day, after being out in it all day, you come home to your nice." oven house that's had no ac on (laughs) and and you're trying to open all the doors and walk walk waft in the curtains to try and get a bit of air to come in oh god do you have fans and stuff yeah you can use fans but i i would love to have a fan but we can't have a fan on because susie doesn't like the noise get her some earplugs so i have to sit there in my pants dripping in sweat oh god well Pants. You don't wear pants. You're not even wearing any right now. I'm wearing pants. Do I need to prove it? <laughs> we <laughs> no, <don't>. we're good. <laughs> we just had I, pants are underwear. 
<laughs> You're thinking of trousers. <laughs> right. Okay. I hope everybody can hear us. Okay. Keep working on we it were, each week. We were going to go over to Skype. We were going to go over to Skype, but we just tried it and the quality was shit. The yeah, so I'll terrible. keep messing around with that stuff. Anyway. All right. Where are we? Do you want to so, look? Well, so the last episode. Let's have a look at that. I want to look at the last episode uh, because I haven't had Terry and I were actually just talking where both of us have been flat out this week at work and stuff. And I was trying to keep uh, caught up, <laughs> but I uh, was not able to. Um, and that's actually a good thing. That means you guys were commenting, but so <laughs> I'm chuckling because it's really funny. So we were asking you guys to comment and uh, cause it helps the algorithms and stuff. And um, people were. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh, awesome are guys you <laughs> oh you guys are awesome i gotta read this backwards <laughs> and he put it in each line that's fucking brilliant and matthew williams matt i hope you get your hat soon uh you guys suck <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> great stuff as usual oh god Colin Johnson, why are these clown Sheraldons not within 100 miles of my house? I'd have a crew at his dojo and dropping class. No, more of that needs to be done. I think we're starting to become um, uh, the outing crew here. Of yeah, the, uh, people, and we should do. We will use this platform to oust fakers. Ah, I see one here. Brad Henson. Scott mentioned a retired Navy SEAL who goes after fake SEALs. His yeah. name is Don Shipley, and I recommend looking at his YouTube videos. Cool. Thanks, Brad, for putting that in. I'm a Patreon member for three channels, Cameron Quinn, Nicholas Bota, Don Shipley. You guys, you gentlemen, look at establishing Patreon membership for Add a Super Secret. Uh, I got a reason I don't like doing the um, Patreon thing. I don't want to get into it right now, but we do have Buy Me a Coffee, which is very similar, and if you guys are interested in helping us, please feel free. You'll see it in here in the description. Buy me a coffee, and yeah, because um, the buy me a coffee can be a it can be a one off donation, or you can do a subscription on there. Exactly. And I think we, if you do do a subscription, we're gonna have to sort some stuff out for the subscribees, where yeah. they get a little bit of extra secret content, or they may get a video call from me once a week or once a month. You don't want that. God, we're supposed to be encouraging people, not discouraging them. <laughs> you can have a 30-second video call with me once a month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great stuff here. Look, how far back did I go people before talk, I, people I fell are to, off? People are talking about the oil checks. <laughs> All right, speaking of oil, oil checks, check. speaking of oil checks, let me stop sharing here. Uh, uh, yeah, so I've, I've started jujitsu. And I am uh, going to, uh, oh my God, um, oh, oh, it's terrible, I'm getting old. Uh, GracieWoodbridge.com is the, uh, the website. So it's, Woodbridge is an area just close to my, where I live. And uh, anyway, so I discovered this place. It's uh, run by Professor uh, Dan Maroney. He's a fourth Dan under uh, Hoyler Gracie. So he's legit. Classes have been amazing, man. Oh, my God. I, I've been messaging Pavel nonstop. It's really, 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 really good. Uh, I love it. And one of the coolest there, coolest things there is a... Uh, so I'm in basically um, an introduction group, right? Yeah. So I'm doing that. And it's all pretty basic stuff. Um, but I, be, uh, I befriended, or I should say someone befriended me as a brown belt there. And uh, he, he's, uh, uh, it's just been awesome. So his name's Rodrigo, uh, and I think he goes by Rod. And uh, he's kind of like taking me under his wing a bit. And it's really cool because even though we're doing basic stuff, he's really, uh, he'll show me the finite details and the little things that, and man, it's like having private instruction. So that's good. And you will, you, we will, you will have a, you'll buddy up with a guy. And then the same as in the dojo. I mean, you're same thing, but senior grade, and they'll help you through it. Fair enough, but like usually, you know, it's people at similar after or, they beat the shit out of you, right? <laughs> at similar ranks or or whatever. But Rodrigo is like he's been doing it. He's from Brazil. He's been doing this a long time. He's a brown belt, as I said. So you know, so he's, quite, he's high up in it. He's yeah. So I re and he's competitive. So I really, really appreciate him yeah. taking the time to do that, and it's been so. I I I would say I awesome. top Rodrigo. I, I probably, uh, Rodrigo, if you're listening to this, if oh, you God. need to oil check Scott. 
<laughs> oil check him good. <laughs> so you need to sort his oil. Jesus. <laughs> um, I would say probably a brown belt in BJJ is probably the equivalent to a second dan in Kyokushin. In terms of like level and stuff like that? In, in if, terms of level of knowledge, yeah. If they are... Um, yeah, if they're if they're well, based uh, on based on a legit brown belt yeah. and a legit second dan. Because okay, I, know second, I, I know yeah. second I know second dan's that are basically yellow belts. Yeah, that's that's where I was going with that. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting. The other thing I find interesting uh, as well is um, you know the the word us is used a lot there, obviously coming from fucking butchered, butchered. But they don't. I don't think a lot of them know the history of where us comes no, from. They I don't. don't understand I don't it. think they realize it comes from Kyokushin. And no. uh, and I have these with my mates at, at the club there, and we say it all the time. And it's like, listen, it's not O double S. Well, it is OSU. Well, it should be OSU, but. It, that's, you it know why, that's us, the Brazilian us, thing. Us Shinobi, yeah, it, it, the word is there. But uh, And I said to him, I said, listen, you say it wrong, because someone you're listening to Brazilians say it, and the Brazilians come in and they go, eh, man, oh, man, yeah. oh. And it's like, it's not oh, it's us, 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 us. Hey, come on, man, you, you got to keep the respect, man, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I do appreciate that they use it, which is awesome because yep. I've never run into that anywhere else other yep. than. And so it's kind of second nature to me. And it's funny how it, how it, how it's, it's a, it's based on a Japanese art, but Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is a Brazilian art, but it's a huh. Japanese instruction. Absolutely. I mean, it comes from the Japanese root. terms. Yeah. 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 You think they think they would be. Brazilian terms for it. Kind of, I, I like that. Well, some, I guess, some parts are like the in terms of like professor and things of those nature. Those, those are Brazilian, uh, like the, so they're ranking. But I, th I think who was I speaking to? Uh, someone was talking to me about it, as in the in that term, a professor term is equivalent to like Xi'an. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This, well, no, I think it's sensei. No, I think so. Because doesn't professor sensei. start? I'm gonna. I'll have to check up on this. I thought professor started at a shodan, a black belt in jujitsu. No, I think isn't professor just um, like your coach? Yeah, that's Obviously what I mean. A, a, a show, uh, yeah, a shodan, but it's not. Yeah, non. No, but I mean in terms of we use the term like shihan as someone that's like a mastery. Who has mastered master it? it. Yeah, but not someone who's mastered it. More the of a Brazilian master. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt donates an expert level of technique and practical skill. BJJ black black belts are often addressed with the, within the art as professor, although some schools and organizations reserve the title for more senior black belts. Yeah, yeah. it's normally the more senior one. It? It's not just cause, not just you've got a showdown. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think I, I th and I think, but I, I but I even thought I think that term doesn't work with jiu-jitsu so much because shodan in karate is the beginner's level that's when you really start learning karate well shodan so literally sho means beginning yeah yeah you get to shodan in a few years you know in kyokushin six average six to ten years to get to shodan other styles are six weeks to get you to know, shodan it, it, it's interesting too the you know how i take it for granted how people outside of kyokushin uh, in the karate world, you know, really don't understand the different styles and what they are. Because even a couple of people that I met there, you know, and they asked if you did anything, if I've done anything before, I'm like, yeah, Kyokushin, Kyokushin Karate, whatever. Uh, oh, I did karate for whatever. Oh, what what did you do? I did something at my local whatever. Yeah. It's that thing where Kyokushin gets, it's, it's almost like I want to stop using it's the word karate. <laughs> I just want to keep to use Kyokushin. Because people don't realize how different Kyokushin is compared to like a Shotokan or your average, uh, you know, Water YMCA or uh, like that. Yeah. karate. It's, uh, yeah, they don't realize that it's full contact knockdown karate. And so it's interesting. Yeah, interesting. and it's longer and, and it's probably one, it's quite a long path to Shodan. I don't yeah, know that's another thing. You you always used to be looking at eight to ten years for your showdown. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. gone quicker now. I know people are banging through the gate sort of six to seven years on their showdown. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like every three months, six months, you but when they go through it. Or it depends how hard they work and if they have a background yeah. and well, all that look, kind of stuff. 
yeah, you you can go through it fast. But I think so for us. I've never seen really, anything less than five or six years, though. <laughs> no, it's got it's got to be minimum five. You can't be sure down in yeah, Kyokushin yeah. in under five years unless you mm-hmm. are again levels of training. Yes, Urushi Deshi. Yeah, exactly. But then yeah. you know, uh, uh, three years of Ushideshi is the equivalent to sort of eight years of normal training twice a week, three times a week. Yeah. But I think the two, you know, we use the term shodan as beginners level. I don't think I don't think it would be applicable to jujitsu because a black either. belt in jujitsu is knows their shit. That's not your yeah. That's not your beginning. <laughs> no, you know your fuck. You know your shit. Yeah, yeah. You're not gonna fuck with anybody as a black belt and. Let me correct that. You're probably not going to mess with anybody who's a purple builder above. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. And, and, as, and as much as I've got my own views on um, BJJ in a self-defense situation, you know, where they, they try to sell it as the ultimate self-defense, and it's like you do not go to the ground outside in a self-defense situation. Your whole premise is to stay on your feet no matter what. You need to. Um, so apart from those little views and bits with it, it's like I've got a lot of respect for for BJJ, and oh, certainly the, looking at the grades now and black if they're legitimate guys, like we said, the a black belt in BJJ, and like we said, a brown belt, a brown belt is equivalent probably to a knee dan in Kyokushin in at terms least, of yeah. in terms of knowledge and yeah. ability. You know, yeah. if you've got a, a knee dan, a, a, a good knee dan, they are you know they're quite strong, they're fighting, they're fit. They know some stuff. They've been in a while. I, I'd say a brown belt is like that in BJJ. They're like, if you've got a brown belt, you're like, well, he's been training seven, eight years, nine years. Yeah. Brown belt knows his stuff. And the yeah. gradients are all based on rolling, not based yeah. on showing a kata. Exactly. Doing yeah. You have to demonstra- demonstrate that you actually know the stuff, um, which is really, really cool. And I really respect the fact that they do take a long time. Um, mm-hmm. Unlike other, it's got, I think you have, it's minimum ten years, isn't it? Minimum like ten years to be, black belt, something like that. Yeah, I mean, everybody I know that's a black belt's been doing it. it took about that average that long. So, I mean, it's give or take. There's always the outliers too, like BJ Penn or somebody like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, but know. again, ba- based on ability. So if if a guy comes in and beats everyone. And can show you every move. What are you supposed to like, do with that? Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to say, no, sorry, you can't have a belt because you need to wait three years? It's like, well, I've beaten everyone you know. Everyone you've put in front of me, I've beaten them with the yeah. moves that you've told me to use. So there will be exceptions and there will be, you know, sort of phenoms. But we see the same thing. In, we see the same thing in Kyoko Gym. You'll see people yeah, who, yeah. who just have backgrounds and other stuff or they're very naturally gifted and they'll skip belts and things of that nature. So I would give a grade to people for winning a tournament. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so if, you, if you were the champion, if you won the tournament, then you would go to fourth down or whatever. That, well done. You've won the tournament. You're the best. I also like the fact in jiu-jitsu or at least in, in most BJJ schools, there's no testing per se. It's when the upper belts see you and they know that yeah, you know yeah. your stuff. And they bestow it upon you. Right. Because you, we, we know this, that, and I'm guilty of it myself. When you know there's a test coming, you prepare for it. And you're prepping yes. and prepping and prepping. Yes. You test and then you stop and then you start losing, regressing and stuff like that. Whereas in that area, you've got to be at your game all the time because you never know when it could come. You're being constantly Keep, assessed. Keeps you on your toes. Which I like. Yeah, me too. I love but it. My... The, the, the how I do it in my dojo is a similar type of thing. I'll mm-hmm. tell people we're grading this month. This ah, month, looking at stuff, right? And to be honest, like because we've got a small club, yeah. so my students they won't even be allowed to grade if they're not already at that level, right? And that's what the one be. that's grading them, yeah. So if Since I say Steve someone, does that too, yeah. Or yeah she, sorry, Sheehan some, Steve, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> If I say to um, if I say to them all, you'll be looking at grading this month, you're already at exactly, the level you yeah. need to be. So yeah. I just like to put a little bit of pressure on them and we'll, we'll try to say, right, tonight we'll like, do a little mock session of what it could be like if you were grading tonight. <laughs> Blast them for two hours. And if I'm pleased with everything, I'll, put, I'll, that's the, I'll present everyone with their belts. Yeah. Or, or it may be like, right, we're graded. I'd be like, right, yeah, tonight, well done, everyone, good. Next week, we're going to do some kumite. 
We'll do we'll we'll do right. a, a kumite test what you might have on the grading and then smash them. Or even one night, if we've had a particularly hard session, really worked and really smashed them, I know what I'm doing. I know what I want to see from them. Boom, that was the grading. Then I'll hand out grades. That's cool. Well, I, I, even the other night when I was at Jiu Jitsu, uh, uh, Professor Dan handed out a, a blue belt to somebody. It was just a complete shock at the end of class. He took it out of his game. It was so cool. It makes it more special. Oh, it was so, so cool. I got goosebumps has, when I was there. It was like, it Chuk-Shin was. Chokshin has become very commercialized. And it's like, right, there's a grade in every three months. Turn up with your license. Turn up with your fee. I'll sit at the table, all the books out. Show me the stuff you can do. Right, stamp, stamp, no stamp for you. Stamp, mm-hmm. grading fees, done. It's become very commercialized. And I think. In, in all fairness to Kyokushin, it had to become very stylized because the amount, there's millions, millions of people all over the world doing Kyokushin. And yeah. it was all under Hombu. Exactly. So there had to be a process yeah. to try and keep, a, 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 I mean, look at it now. It's in free fall. Everybody's fucking popping up as a 10th Dan. Everyone's, every, like, the amount of people, Sorsai has graded more people after he died <laughs> than he did before he died. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> He's, he's signed more certificates <laughs> since he's been dead. What's that called? Post. There's a word for that. Post. Uh, I forget Post what the signature. Word. No, there's a, <laughs> it's a word. Things that are happen after someone's dead. Anyway, yeah, you're right. He's been very active since he died. <laughs> Lots of signatures and the pictures he's been posing with people. Oh my god. Yeah. So yeah, we've gotten on a little rant recently, and I didn't want to go down that path, but we did about it kind of exposing some shenanigans if you will and yeah. you know what screw it i think we should if nobody else is going to really give it a big we'll platform and voice call them on it why not like that last and one we, was a uh, infuriating we are you we are uniquely positioned because you are ifk up in canada mm-hmm. i don't give a fuck so yep. <laughs> yeah we, we'll call people respectfully and when you know yeah we're not I'm being not, jerks about it, we're just being I honest i'm not one i'm not one for a witch hunt yeah, exactly. Like, so we know people who love a witch hunt. Yeah. And they try yeah. to look, look for something that's not there. We are kind of let, you know, be as you want to be. If that's what you want to do, that's up to you. Um, but certainly these 10th dance, and certainly if it's someone, you know, you know, if uh, Kansho Rayama, if he decided mm, now was... to be a 10th Dan, no one would can, no one can question that. Of course not. And no one if, would. No one can, no, no one can say, mm, you can't be a 10th Dan. No one mm. would say it. But if some bloke last year who was a third Dan has now all of a sudden popped up as a 10th Dan with no background, no one knows who he is. Someone's going to say something. Then we're going to call him on it. Yeah. And it's so funny, like after we did that, and well, we've done it a couple of times now, and now I get people sending me stuff, and some of them are, are quite hilarious. Like some of you can't even bother. There's no bother. I, I don't know if I showed you. There was one, a guy has with like 10th dance and so much stuff. And half of it's just nonsense. Like 10th uh, dance, and karate. Always, <laughs> it is no, they're in. 10th um, dance, it's self-defense. Spanish speaking, <laughs> um, like South American countries. I've noticed a lot of them. Uh, and it was like, oh, Kateri this is. making enemies. <laughs> no, no, I. I've seen lots of Spanish ones because it's like, oh, this is Professor Doctor Professor Sanchez to Eduardo. He's got 15 tenth dance. Yeah. And there was another one, 23 tenth dance, and then like 50. Crazy. I've got a tenth dan in karate, and I've got a tenth dan in advanced karate. <laughs> And a tenth dan <laughs> in, in middle karate. And that, that's what they've got. They write them on there. Anyway, charlatans. So when we'll see them, we will call them out. What is the subject tonight then? Well, actually, before we do move on, I just do, I do want to say that I know it's been only like a week or so in doing the jujitsu thing, but I really, honestly, even like you were talking about, like we talked about the miss, missing components of Kyokushin and stuff like that. God, it feels so good, man. I excuse me, I can't put it at words enough. It's like a perfect marriage. It's this. It's like it makes you feel so it's, much more. Like I'm so hungry for it as well, and the knowledge. You'll be missing it. Yeah. Because so I'm, I'm like I said, like I hold my fucking strap line. I'm sorry to say, Kyokushin today is not Kyokushin as it was meant to be. You're not doing proper Kyokushin as the style if you're not doing the grappling components and the headshots and the throws and the grabs. That was all there. 
So you, you've had a chunk of you missing for years. Oh, it's, it's amazing. And I can really see how someone's um, self-confidence, I guess, for lack of a better word, also really, like, because I, I often thought about, like, I'm, I feel pretty confident as I am, but I'm also very hesitant and cognizant of the fact that I could get in trouble too, especially in this day and age, we've talked about this and you as a doorman, you know, more than anything. Like if I get something in the street and I drop somebody with strikes, it's a big difference than oh, somebody ringing. Let me hang this up. Um, uh, it's a big difference than, uh, subduing somebody safely yeah. without any injury. I find that, even more empowering than the knowing that you can knock someone out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I'm getting with yeah, that? Yeah, 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 I understand. It, it, it's, uh, but I was always in Kyokushin, though. There are holes, locks, wrist holes, shoulder mm-hmm. lock, the choke. Um, and I've had, a, I've had a very eclectic mix of, a mix of martial arts. So even from like a young age, from 12, 13 years old, when I was a lower grade yellow belt i was going to aikido i was going to judo i was going to basically anything that was around me just to soak it up yeah um but you're lucky you had that couldn't afford to grade any other stuff though i mean i did aikido for three years i Mm -hmm. did yaido for two years i did judo for 18 months as well Uh, and uh, but i did and i did valley tudo before mma came out it was valley tudo Mm mm-hmm the Portuguese, and it basically translates as anything, anything goes. Anything goes, yeah. Yeah, and that was about before MMA, before it was kind of like UFC. Well, that was um, the precursor to UFC. So I used to used to go to Valley Tudo with a bike, uh, a Mike, a, a bloke called Mike Swambo, mm-hmm. who was the guy like for Valley Tudo in this area, but an hour away. Mm-hmm. Me and my mate Gary, we used to go down there. We trained there for half a year doing stuff with them and it's eye-opening stuff because we are very con- in kyokushin we become very conditioned to knock down and i was yeah. the same punch punch kick kick no one's stronger than us yeah. we are supreme like a punch you in the chest until you fall on the floor you don't punch me in the face though <laughs> oh well you can't hold, well, listen you can't hold my arms how am i supposed to punch you if you're holding my arms that's <laughs> That's not fighting. <laughs> you can't hold me. And we, we were preconditioned to that. And like I said, when I was a young kid and got opened up to it, like you were being opened up to it now. Yeah, it's great. But some of that pre- preconditioning is actually good too, in a way, because even like this week, we were like, I've been messing around with, with uh, Rod. Like, it's weird how my instincts, like, we'll do something if I go to um, like side control or, or a half mount or something. My first instinct is rain an elbow in. <laughs> it's, it's gr- or or yeah. punch. It's fr- my first instinct is this and that's good. damage. <laughs> so, if we look at it from the other perspective, it's like, yeah, we as karate people are very lacking in the grappling side. But then when- I don't want to say karate anymore. Kyokushin. You can't even say Kyokushin. 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 Kyokushin Kai. Um, where we were lacking in the grappling throwing stuff, when you jump into jiu-jitsu, mm-hmm. and it's like they're completely lacking in striking. Mm-hmm. They don't think about striking at all mm-hmm. in jiu-jitsu. Unless uh, they're doing like was, combat jiu-jitsu or something. But yeah. yeah, or if they're doing like MMA-related jiu-jitsu. Yeah. But jiu-jitsu, yeah. the art, there's no striking in it. Right, yeah. Um, so, what if I, so I struggle with getting into a better position to submit but I feel vulnerable because I'm wide open. Right, right. So there's there's always a give and take. And like, yeah. And when I've said the guy, oh, let's do some take when we've like rolled in Saluri's dojo with Bryn. A couple right. of judo, judo guys that come over and be like, right, let's do takedowns, but I can do low kicks. Right. So I'll do low kicks and you try and take me down and just smash them to bits for low kicks because they're not used to it. Yeah. They've never had anybody kicking them as hard as that in mm. the knee, in the shin, in the ankle, in the leg. They're mm. not used to it. Yeah. Just yeah. the same as when the first time we get taken down and you're on the floor and you're flapping about like a fish and then skip, sip, bam, and you shit yourself because you don't know what to do. Yeah, man. I, I Again, with Rod this week, there's a, we were just doing a game where I was just on my back and he's just trying to uh, pass my guard. Pass guard. Just, just, just to tap me on the head, just to show that you can. And then the next level is to go to side control and then so on and so forth. And yeah. just from the first level, just tap. I got so, ex- and my cardio is pretty good now. I got so exhausted. 
in a different because I'm because you're using strength it's just strength all the time rather than that technique and it'll yeah. take a while to settle in that's what he said he's like you know just you're, he's like he's like you need to save some of this you're not going to last through the class and it brought me right back to the beginning of Kyokushin how I used to be the same way I'm like all right I got valuable lessons from Kyokushin here. I need to like slow down. I remember down. doing, when I was doing an MMA class, I was training with a guy and I'd been training a while and I, you know, strength through everything, fighting everyone and fighting through it. And in the end, I could just, I remember feeling so exhausted that I was like just begging him, just fucking <laughs> do it, get it over with. <laughs> or just fucking knock, knock me out because I'm not going to give up. Just put me out. <laughs> put me out of my misery. <laughs> It was like so exhausted. Oh, uh, you know, I don't want to exhaust this uh, this topic too much, but because I can go on. Proper little, proper little jujitsu bitch now. I know, but that was another thing too that I found. Like, so when I was when I was with Rod doing some stuff, like even like I was watching him do stuff, and I'm like, "Mm, I don't understand why that's like they're talking about this pressure that's imposed. I'm like, it doesn't. And he's just like, wait till you're in the position. So then I got into position. It was horrific. It was absolutely, I felt like I was folded in half and I was just like, I couldn't breathe. It was panicky. It's crazy. It's crazy. And you, and you wait, you wait till you roll with a big guy who's like, a that's what he said. Because <laughs> him and I are like r- roughly the same size. All they do is lie on top of you. Now yeah. you, you've got to do everything you can possibly do to just carry on breathing as well as trying to fucking roll your way out of this <sighs> shit. It's a fun, it's going to be a fun journey. It is. You'll enjoy it. I can't wait. You get up a bit in it now, and then come over here to Ronin, and we have, and then we'll do a little bit of kicky kicky punchy punchy, bang straight. I'm gonna around wrap it. you up like a fucking pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> it's not wrap you. You don't. You've got to say, "I'm gonna bend you. I'm gonna bend you up." Yeah, that's pretzel. right. I'm gonna hit you with the earth. <laughs> that's one of my favorite things from judo. That's a good one. That is. Yeah, you get smashed with the planet. <laughs> If you get past my low kicks hey. and I I pokes, <laughs> <laughs> right. The All subject right. we were, we were going to talk about uh, derivatives and offshoots of Kyokushin. Yeah, and if we've got time, Pablo, and, thanks for the idea and the inclination. We'll get into all the organizations. In Let's Kyokushin. not. I hope not. I hope we don't get that far. That's exhausting. Well, Let's talk about a, this, well, at least the main ones because there's an infinite number. They, there's probably three popped up since last week. Well, that's what I mean. And, like, and another fucking tenth down out there. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm sweating here. God. Anyway. Yeah. So, so are they? Are we going to do these in any particular order or just randomly? Like, well, just I've got. What have you pulled up there? Have you pulled up off um, Shitopedia. Uh, <laughs> well, I wanted to again, guys. Apologize, but I do have. You know. If I ever make money outside of work and I can do this stuff like this full time, you'll get much better content. We are, listen, we are, right? We struggling. do the shows and we're like, what are we going to talk about? Oh, let's talk about this. Have you looked at anything? No. I don't have time. <laughs> I have no time. Out. He's like, have you looked at any stuff? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I looked at a few bits. <laughs> even, like, even right now, we're getting ready to go. Terry's like, I'm good to go. I'm like, I can't. I, I'm still tied up with work stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, and and it's, it, that's what happens because we're not professional podcasters. We don't get paid for it. We don't know and what the fuck we're look- doing. <laughs> 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 anyway, all right. So Ashihara was the first one, and I think it's just because it was in alphabetical order. I don't know if that was the first. Uh, who was the first? What was the no, first best, offshoot? Best, best think now go back think of the first offshoot and guys get in the comments as well talk yeah if we miss anything too Um, please it must have been it must have been the first offshoot must have been uh world oyama and sedo nakamura was it or would it have been oh shit his name's escaped me now who broke off and did um the guy who went to uh he went to thailand we talked about him before Um, Kurosaki. Kurosaki. Wouldn't he have been the first? He might have been, actually, because he went off. Yeah, he went off and did like a kickboxing. Yeah, I mean, I know it's not a Kyokushin derivative, but obviously highly influenced. So I don't know how far we want to go down with this. I guess we should stick with like Kyokushin with derivatives. Kyokushin. Yeah, yeah, as we've got like Seido, Shinden, Kudoshiar. Sure. We know they're like 
based on Kyokushin. I then think that, um, if that's the case, that then it prob- probably is what you said, Oyama. Yeah, I I think with him, he um, he went off and did kickboxing. Well, Kyokushin based, but he worked on the low kick. He incorporated the low kick. Uh, had a very success. What, what was he called? Majiro. Majiro Dojo. It's still operating to this day. Very successful uh, and I heavily influenced Dutch kickboxing as well. Heavily influenced Dutch kick. You know, another time we should do an episode just on kickboxing and the influence of Kyogashin. Because again, I don't think people realize, like we do and we take it for granted. But I don't think the average person, when they say, to hear about Dutch kickboxing, they don't know Kyokushin. They never heard of Kyokushin. They don't know anything about it. And they and it's, you know, it, and it is a strong foundation of it. So I think maybe sometime we should do one on that too. Yeah. And we still got to do an episode on Motobo. Yes. And we will. But that one is one I do need a break from work we, and actually do yeah. some proper. Here's the thing. And, and people keep saying, oh, when are you doing this, when are you doing that? Thing is, we don't, we want to give it its due credit. We don't mm-hmm. just want to do a shitty job. We want to have editing we want pictures we want yeah. stuff we want to be up on the history and we want to make it a good show absolutely not that all all our shows are good but we yeah wait a second it. what do you say all of our shows are good <laughs> we want to make this like a professional one all the lights and stuff so i'd be like a point up there and i'd be like choco behind me <laughs> that sort of stuff all right so yeah we said world oyama world oyama Seido. and for the so kids listening go- who is world oyama Soshi Oyama. But how are they? So this is a question that you'll see come up. Why do they have the last name of Sosai Oyama? Didn't we just answer this last week? Yeah, we did. But there's new yeah. new people joining. Oh, get in the comments then. Get in the comments. <laughs> so World Oyama Karate is not Kyokushin Karate Oyama in Japan. Get in the comments and tell us why. We're not going to answer it for them. No, and you obviously got Yasuhiko Oyama, who was Shigeru. uh, Shigeru's younger brother or yeah. older brother, older or younger? Older, I think. Older right? brother just brought uh, just brought the book out. Yeah, I think yeah. He no, he's the younger, isn't he? I don't know. But anyway, I, yes, but he does. So, have, I mean, he's seventy nine, so he's, <laughs> yeah, he's fairly getting on a bit. Would we say then? Because we have so we we're doing this raw. We haven't actually correct, which is cool into dates and stuff. We're just spitballing, folks. We're spitballing. You get in the comments and you correct us if it's wrong and you tell us. Uh, but we'd say, so then, World Oyama Karate uh, was when the... But it wasn't that the same time as Nakamura? And and that's Sado. what I was actually looking up right now. It would have been around the same time. <clears throat> I'm just reading right now. So, as okay, so Shigeru... Let's see. It says, as the oldest remaining uh, disciple, I hate that word, of Kancho Masuyama, founder Grandmaster Kyokushin, uh, he was his best student and ranked only below him in the entire <laughs> Kyokushin hierarchy. I love Wikipedia. Uh, even after parting Masuyama's organization, he continued to maintain the respect for the man, calling him the father, karate master, mentor, or should It doesn't say, oh, you know, uh, it doesn't say the year. I can't find the year. Anyway. Um, yeah, so it would have been around, I think around the same time as Nakamura as well, who broke off mm. to form Sado Kaikan. Sado Kaikan. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll just click that now. Sado Kaikan Karate. Yeah, now, it's, my... it's, it's derived, derived from Kyokushin. Yeah. They oh, probably... no, this is a different one. No, this is Kazuyoshi Ishii. That's Sedo what I was mentioning. Sado Kaikan. Yeah. That's the Japanese. Yeah, that's Japanese. the different one. That's, that's not a, Nakamura. That's, kick, that's kickboxing, isn't it? No, it's not. It's 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 um, it's yeah. It's like the kickboxing. I'm sure it went on to be like more into the K1. This one where they cut the sleeves off. The gears. Right. <laughs> yeah, which was actually kind of cool back then. Um, I'm just looking up here as well. Yeah. So what was the other Sado then? Sado Kai Kan. Here, I'll look it up. Sado Juko. Is it Sado Juko? Which one is that? Sorry. Uh, Sado means sincere way, love, respect, New York yes. City, Sado, yeah, Sado, yeah, 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 yeah. Sado, Sado is Sado, Nakamura. Sado Juku, Tadashi Nakamura, yeah. formed in 1976, 1976, um, so he left uh, Kyokushin, 
we won't get into the politics of why he left and all that stuff. We can leave that for others. And if people want to no, comment, that's different feel, stuff. Yeah. Feel, feel free to. But my question is, as we go through these two, how different are they than Kyogajin? Like, so let's just take those two. Uh, yeah. So we have th- Oyama Karate and, and Sato. I think World Oyama Karate is Kyokushin. Exactly. And so is Sato. It's, it, it, yeah, it's exactly as Kyokushin. So Sato, Sado, all I, the same I, katas, all the same requirements, all the same rules. I haven't come across a lot of Sado, to be honest. I haven't it's seen stayed, a lot of Sado. It, no, me neither. But I do have a lot of respect for them. And I obviously have a lot of respect for Tadashi Nakamura. Um, I love what he did. I love his mindset and philosophy. It's very Zen-based. Um, he's influenced a lot of people. There's one in particular that his name has escaped me now. Um, who wrote? Uh, he was a Na- went on to become a Navy SEAL, but he was a longtime student of Nakamura, and in his and he runs a uh, SEAL fit kind of thing um, out of California. Um, anyway, the point is that he puts a lot of emphasis on his training that he went through with Nakamura, and it to me it just sounded and seemed very very. It's mm-hmm. Kyokushin. It was Kyokushin. Uh, yeah. So I think it was, you know, obviously very, all this stuff is political based. Um, so, cause I, I don't really see. I think then around, i not, it would be Ashihara after that. I think it'd be Ashihara. And that's where we start getting into things that are a little the different. The differences come in a bit because Ashihara very, it's all about the Sabaki. Correct. Right? And you using that Sabaki movement, which, you know, was in Kyokushin and in Karate exactly. originally, but, uh, and, because 19 in the early 70s, the world tournament. So pretty much from the 70s, Kyokushin started morphing into a sport version of itself. Because no one was practicing sabaki. Because what's the point if you can't grab in the tournament? No one was practicing headshots. Because what's the point if it's not in the tournament? And then this is where we lost those elements. And Ashihara, with his with his background, full time karate, Kyokushin. Judo. Uh, also Muay Thai Judo Pancration yeah. as well, yeah. uh, and Jiu-Jitsu, using the footwork and the sabaki to get to that blind spot of an opponent where they can't see you. Mm-hmm. What put you know He wanted more emphasis on that, so he went on and formed Ashihara. And yeah, making sure that he was incorporating, there's takedowns, of course, in yeah. Ashihara, and sweeps and takedowns. Got rid of all the kata and derive their own so they only have i was just looking up now because i knew they only have six uh, six kata and they they created themselves so you have the beginner's kata basic kata throwing kata sparring kata fighting kata and self-defense kata Mm. oh six sorry six kata types so they created their own kata and i've seen some of them and um they are very they don't look like what we're used to. No, no, they don't. They're, they're much they, more look they like, look, like sh- yeah. they look like shadow boxing. They look like shadow boxing, yeah. yeah. And uh, and that's essentially it. And it looks as far for, as for what they do, it's perfect. There's two organizations of Ashihara. You've got um Ashihara in Japan. Correct. Uh, Iko, and you've got Aiko, which is Shian Dave Yonkers. Yeah. Who was Semi Schultz coach. Yeah. Um his is Aiko, A-I-K-O, I think, which is very Holland, Dutch based. But again, it kind of split down the middle. Half of Ashihara was with Japan. Half of Ashihara was sort of is Dave Yonkers. Mm-hmm. Um, um, it says here from, obviously, we know from Ashihara came Enshin. Yeah, actually, that's where I was going next, actually. Enshin is, uh, is exactly where I was going to go next. And ne- Enshin and- Kaikan. Which also uses the Sabaki method. Well, that's where I was going to go next. So here's another situation where so you have an offshoot, Ashihara. You have a student of Ashihara, uh, who originally was Kyokushin. Uh, like Nem- in Nemoya? Ne- correct. And and he's now in... Um, Joe Col- Col- Correct. He's in, in Colorado. And uh, Shihan Steve actually trained with him for some time when he was in Colorado. And... Um, yeah, so I don't know what the difference is, if any, between... So, yeah, so he broke off and, and, and created his organization of Inshin, and I don't know how much of a difference there is between Ashihara, if any, between Ashihara and Inshin. So, again, mm-hmm. if people can tell me Get in, in the, the comments, comments. Tell us, because I know loads of Ashihara people, all my friends out in Holland, um, and I've got some Inshin friends as well. Yeah. Uh, so get in the comments and tell us. 
Um, so yeah, and I think again, these things as you are Ashihara went out because he seen that, and again, maybe some politics, but maybe that there's certain things in Kyokushin now that are not there that I don't like that I think that are important. So I'm going to go off and do my own thing. Yeah, yeah. And then maybe as well then with um, Enshin, probably thought as well, well, there's some other bits that I want to add as well. Or it's like, well, I've got a different view or I want to do this. Or quite often it comes down to money as well. I'm going to go off and have my little own thing as well. Right. There's always different varying things. And they've all, and these are not these are not little upstarts off on the side. These were big names, big people with a big background. That's a really good point. This is not the same as we were talking about last week with the guy who popped no. up who went from third Dan to tenth yeah. Dan and doesn't. Yeah, can't these do are not up, these are not upstarts. These no. are big names that have decided they're going to go a different path. Right, like former world tournament champions. Yeah, um, and whatnot. Yeah, and I think they they are well they are well suited to make those decisions. Because they've got a background, they've got a base. He can do, Joko could do whatever he wants. I don't think anybody's going <laughs> to, like, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, no, no one no one ever said to him, say, listen, I think you, I don't think your wing's strong enough for you to leave the nest yet. Get back down. <laughs> yeah. I maybe learn a few more punches and kicks. Yeah, exactly. No one's going to say that to him. But, got, but again, on the obvious, flip the other end of the spectrum, there's people today who have been training for eight years, got a show done, started my own style. Yeah. What are you calling it? Choka Shin, Shintikai. Exactly. Jesus. It's like, it I'm laughing, thing. but it's actually true. That's what makes it sad. I mean, at least Ronin Dojo is just the name of the dojo. We do Kyokushin, yeah, exactly. and we do old Kyokushin. There's nothing else different about it. It's not Terry Super Ninja style. It's Kyokushin. It's not my stuff. Is stuff that I've learned. Well, you do have to punch sheep in the head, though, don't you? And you're that's on your first Q grade. I got you. Okay. I'm not a baby sheep, not a lamb. It's no. fully going ill. You have uh, to knock out. Okay. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, right? I've seen you. Um, a descendant art from Ashihara was also Su Jin, uh, Su Shin Jen. Which you probably might not know about, mm. uh, Dave Cook, who was mm-hmm. a big Kyokushin, big yeah. David Cook, big Kyokushin name back in yeah. the day. Yes, he yeah. went on and formed. Um, I said, I think I'm saying right, Su Shin Jen. I know a few, a lot of people who trained under him. He was quite pally as well with the Ashihara group. He's a big, he's a big name. He's died in the last few years. Okay, um, but that was another derivative from Ashihara. There was another one you just made me remember too. Um, <clears throat> Ashihara engine. Yeah. Mm. World or Yellow Oops. Uh, so what do you think? I see we've got I, Kudo, but we haven't spoken about Kudo. Yeah, yet. I don't want to get to Kudo yet because you're driving me crazy now. There's one here I'm trying to remember. Um, what was what, which in which aspect Japanese? I know it's an offshoot, and it's no one here because there's no not even any schools in North America or the West that I'm familiar with. Um, so, my friend Nori from Japan he did this style, mm-hmm. it's an offshoot of Kyokushin, except the same thing they got rid of all the kata, they only had like three kata, and but sport based, so the you no, know, no face punching but full contact. Um, I'm just trying to actually, you know, what the best way for me to find it? I'll go to my own website, ha ha ha, and um, just look up Nori because I have it in there. I talked about it, and um, because maybe people might want to look into it, and uh, yeah, so it's exactly the same as um, like if you saw like Nori when Nori stayed here, uh, and stayed with yeah. me for the he went to tournaments here to Kyokushin tournaments and competed and won, and um. Like, because the rules were identical. Like, uh, everything was identical. And he worked out with us. Everything was identical. The only thing is you should have watched him do kata. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, it was something to behold. <clears throat> Let's just say his kata wasn't that strong. 
Um, karate, karate. Oh my God! Take me to a Japanese page. I'll never be able to pronounce this. Karate Sayuwa Kaikan. S Y S Y U W A. Right. And that's another offshoot. S Y U W A Karate. I've never heard of that one. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. So it's a Japanese, and uh, it's, it's Sayua Kaikan Full Contact Karate. Yeah, that's them. There we go. Uh, anyway, so that's another offshoot of Kyokushin as well. And yeah. uh, so again, difference between Kyokushin, no kata. Um, that's about it. They, they did a lot of focus on uh, um, Sabaki method. Mm -hmm. So you get that relationship to Inchen and... And those guys. All right, next one. Would you say uh, Shidokan? Yeah, in the in their in the list of orders. Shidokan, which is so in uh, so you know, that's quite yep. a big one as well. Shidokan. Yep, uh, that was from nineteen seventy eight. Yeah. Um, just trying to see if there was any. Okay, so what does it say here about them? Sometimes it's described as triathlon of martial arts. Encompasses full contact karate, Muay Thai, grappling basement. So there's grappling base in this as well. It's yeah, they do ground fighting as well in it. Oh, they do? Okay, yeah. so I'm not so familiar um, with this. Yeah, because I've, I've gone to one of their tournaments in, in Italy looking at their fighting. So they've got the stand-up fighting, but it will go to the ground as well. And you can do some groundwork, but it's limited the time on the ground. You've got to get back up. Okay. I find one funny thing here, though. I'm looking at famous practitioners. So it has yeah. a few there that I, I don't know their names. And then George St. Pierre. I don't think George St. Pierre did this. Uh, he did. He, he's he, never never said that. Yeah, but it's the same with everyone. Everyone everyone will claim someone now and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, he was there. <laughs> George St. Pierre did Gilkishin. Anyway. Okay. I'm not that familiar with that one. Okay. Interesting. Um, so that should have so uh, another one I've just seen is Sewaki or Se Sewak Sewaki. Yeah, guess who that is? Right, <laughs> do it. Should I guess? I uh, know who, uh, big name, very big name, very well respected. <laughs> I'd made a Costa. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. Just seen that year. It's uh, founded in 1996 by Kato How do you spell Admir it? De Costa. Who? How Sewaki, do you spell that? S S E I W A K A I. Sawaki. Oh yeah, because that's and it says right here not to be confused with the go. That's exactly what I was thinking. There's a Goju offshoot of this, so it's not to be confused with that one. Okay, full contact founded in Concho Admir de Costa after Rogers resigning from the IKO. Hmm. Not a big name. No, no one's going to uh, can't question him. No, but again, I'd love um, to know what the difference is, if any. Yeah, if listen, people who are listening who are doing these styles, put a little synopsis in the comments. We're give one us family. Little, give us a little synopsis. We're we're all we're all punchy, punchy, kicky, grabby, slappy stuff. Punchy, punchy, kicky, kicky, all coming from the roots of Kyokushin. What more do you want? And, and grabby, slappy. All right. Who else you have? Um, I think should we uh, kudo obviously Daido Juku. That's the one I was waiting for. Du -du 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 -du. A, we know a lot about that one. That's that's quite a big one. Uh, that could and, be an episode I, all to its own. Yeah, we've said this before, right? I um, love the fact that Daido Juku is the art, kudo is the tournament structure. I love that how they differentiate those Except, and then so both are practiced. You you could. You can be a black belt in kudo for winning a tournament for, for show demonstrating that you can do X Y Z and then you get a show done in it. Yeah. Not necessarily the art side then of Daido Juku. Correct. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And yeah. for kids out there who don't know what kudo is, um, who was the founder of kudo? Takashi Azuma, who recently died. Yes. And what makes Kudo a little different than Kyokushin that's practiced today? Because they have incorporated the Judo side of it. Correct. So and they wear, they've got the face punches and they've got the Judo elements and they've got a certain amount of grappling elements on the floor as well. I really... So they wear, 
go on. No, keep going, please. Stop fucking interrupting me then. <laughs> it's a free flow conversation. They were, they were, well, yeah, you know as much about Kudo as I do. I do, but I'm, you know, letting Shihan speak. <laughs> go on, Senpai. You can tell the people. What do they wear? Tell us what makes Kudo tournaments different. They wear a fish bowl on their head. <laughs> That's how it was invented. Asuma had a fishbowl on his head and tried to get his mate to knock him out, and he couldn't. So they wear Straight this kind of face shield thing with, with padding around, which I got to be honest. So I re, I do love kudo, and I love like watching, observing. I've never done kudo, but I like watching and observing. But the one thing that concerns me with kudo is that helmet. And I don't like the helmet. The reason it concerns me, so, and also I've noticed that is, please again, comment if you correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think there's any straight in the, in the, in the, in the sports side, in the tournaments. I don't think they're allowed straight punches. I think they're only looping punches. No, I think they do. I think they can do straight punches, but really? obviously when I'm sure I haven't seen it, man. when you're, when you're gra- Yeah. But the, that's straight punches. You normally got to keep your head up. You can do a big looping punch and put your head down and protect your head and bang these overhands. I need someone to validate that. I look into that. it to check because I've yeah. got lots of kudo guys. Um, I check with them. But what it, my my only thing with kudo that concerns me is that helmet, and the reason is it's that false sense of security, that false sense of defense. Oh yes. Because I'm telling you right now, if I rock you in the head. Whether you're wearing that helmet or not, you're getting the same damage inside that brain. You not are. just that. Not, not, not just the damage to the brain, though, right? I, I, I would rather take uh, a gloved, a small gloved punch to the face mm-hmm. than take it on the helmet. Because it's almost like... Your whole sloshed, helmet. man. The helmet, they, but it like magnifies it. The first That's what I'm getting at. Helmet on, the guy c- jumped up, and I'm like, I got a helmet on. I'll just take it on the forehead. Yeah, but smacked me in the head, and it sent a shock wave right down to my ass. I can yeah. feel it go right down my spine and put me into shock a little bit for a second. Mm. I was like, "Fucking hell! Whoa, where did that come from?" Yeah, it's it's not and, realistic. And if you're not used to it, though, if you're not, but then again, again, though, right? It's like saying, I um, "I was trying to think. I'm trying to think of a sport." I know you're coming up with an analogy, right? <laughs> Trying to can't think of one. It's like walking around on skis all your life, being like it's not it's not realistic. I can't I can't go to the shop and these is not realistic. But if you're an Olympic skier, you wear skis. <laughs> that's a good that's the better. That's, uh, that's that, was a, that was a good leap, that. but I don't know. <laughs> I pulled that out of nowhere. That was a good one. Um it's the, if you're used to that, because they train in the helmet as well sometimes. If you're yeah. used to it, okay. But but I'm terrible with boxing gloves on mine. So if I go from being bare knuckle to putting a boxing glove on, mm-hmm. I'm like a drunken fucking hobo swinging punches. Why? What do you mean? You're like all over the place? I say all over the place because it's different. I pinpoint actors like I'm banging you on the nose, the chin, the eye, the ear, moving around, getting them in. Mm-hmm. Put gloves on, these big pillows <laughs> that are now, you know, the contact is several inches away from where my fist actually is. To protect his fists, folks, not to protect the other person's face. I, I'd rather do it with like little MMA gloves. Yeah. It is. Glove, Less gloves, damage. You're not, you're, not, you're not used to doing them as well. We are not. Mm. We don't train in boxing gloves. So when you spar in boxing gloves, it is drunken hobo time. Drunken. I love that. That's a good analogy. Um so yeah, that's my only thing with Kudo. I love Kudo, but I honestly would like to see if they got rid of the helmet and just went down to MMA gloves or something. And but then you were looking at um, MMA. I suppose so. I suppose um, so. Yeah, but uh, the Shinken Shobu, so which is like the knockdown rules with face punches and a little glove. A mm-hmm. small glove. Not an MMA glove, a little bit thicker, mm-hmm. but a small glove. Mm-hmm. Um that you know, that's kind of somewhere in the middle as well, isn't it? So if they had Shinken Shobu with throws and limited grapple into the ground, that that could be the winner. That could have everything. What is the um, the Japanese ginger? What does he do? I don't know. Some made up shit. <laughs> 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 I 
no, he's short, short to calm beast, isn't he? Oh, he's Shinatemi. No, I know, but what I'm... Is, no, Jesus, I didn't know do? you were going to take Fuck the... I didn't know you were going to take the piss out of him. When he did, I meant, how how does he... I mean, his his style is similar to Kudo. I'm just wondering, does Very he... Very similar. Does he well, incorporate... But, but he incorporates... It's more it's more self-defense oriented, but does it incorporate the helmet and all that kind of shit? They, he, he does have the helmet and the gloves, okay. but okay. I don't think they fight... Because Shinatemi is Todd's. Todd created that. Yes. Um, uh, you'll be listening. So get in the comments, Toddney, and tell people <laughs> all about it. And Matt, who won the hat, he was Todd's student. Right. Right. So he's still got a dojo in, um, in England. So he so can, yeah, re- he can Japanese respond as well. Japanese mixed martial arts. So Todd has got striking, throwing, grappling, all put together. Yeah, which is great, but I'm just wondering, like, it, it, does he incorporate the equipment of Kudo as well? Because I'd love which to know his. I love to know his funny thoughts. He's on done it. that because he can't punch for shit. So it's funny that he's done that. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> Todd, leave comments for Terry. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, like uh, I don't know, man. I'm really on the fence with that one because uh, I. Oh, also, does Kudo have any? They don't have any kata, do they? Or do they? I don't know about Kudo. Daido Juku may do. Well, I'll that's have to sorry, speak that's what I mean. To, I've got friends up in London, and I mean, I speak to them and ask them. Well, they'll be watching, so they'll comment in this. Please comment. Tell us all I, about I it. I want to know. Educate Everyone, me. everything we have spoken about. Educate if us. That's your, if that's your style, just write a little uh, three hundred word synopsis <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> little you know, essay. Sm- little short essay, no more than five hundred words. Um, <laughs> we'll just give you. a little break. T- yeah, give a little breakdown of it. And it'll, it'll serve, and that, that will be there. It's on YouTube. It's there for everyone to look at. They'll be like, oh, remember that show? I think it was number fucking 32 or something. They're at 349 now. Go back through it all, and it gives you all the information on there. I do. I, I actually do want to know that around that one. Um, and I, I was actually – there's somebody here now in Toronto that was, gonna, was teaching Kudo, and I was going to go train. But it's kind of a bit of a hike for me to get there. Um, he invited me out, but, um, and then all the COVID shit locked everything down, but whatever, hopefully he's back up and running. What else we got? Sato Juku. And who is Sato? Sato Juku is Sato, isn't it? (laughs) Isn't that, um, Katsuaki Sato. Yeah. You should know who this is. Why should, Why? Why? Why are you saying I should know? First world tournament winner. Oh, I thought you meant for some other reason. <laughs> I was like, what? Do I know the guy or something? Like, where's yeah, the secret he was, element? He lives next door to you. He's got yeah. a shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Speaking of which, actually, let me just segue just for a second. So I'm coming back from the shop or something yesterday. And um, was it yesterday? whatever, it doesn't matter. I was in front of my house and I see this little kid going down on a bicycle wearing a Kyokushin t-shirt. And I was like, what the fuck? And it was, I recognized it was an IK01 uh, logo. So and I saw his mom over there. I'm like, excuse me, is, is your, your son's wearing a Kyokushin shirt? And she's like, yeah, how do you know? <laughs> I said, because well, I do Kyokushin. And she's like, oh, yeah, uh, my husband, uh, he used to be a teacher in, in Russia. And he's there. I'm like, oh, snap, really? So she's like, yeah. So we chatted just for a little bit and... Um, she said he's been in it for years, but he hasn't practiced since moving to Canada. So I'm going to go over and ring his bell. So he obviously lives lives close to you. Well, you're going across to go ring his bell. the street. He lives across the street from me. You're going to go and ring his bell. Knock on his door and ring his bell. I'm not right, going to go punch him in the ring head. Ring his bell means something different, yeah. Yes, I know what you mean. <laughs> you be like that. Hey, is little Timmy there? <laughs> Boom! That's fucking Kyokushin. <laughs> Anyway, I'm stoked. I want to meet this guy. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, there's a weird coincidence. Just, ah. I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it, how random that was. And across the street. So anyway, yes, uh, Sato. Sato, first world tournament winner. Was also he the first? Ju- yeah, Sato. Okay. Was it Sato? Yeah, Sato, Nakamura, Nakamura. Not hmm. Sampai. Sampai did. Yeah, Sato. Um, I'm just looking it up. I didn't know he was the first. Let me see. No, no. Sato excelled in tournament competition. He. Oh, yeah. Wait, hold on. He won the 1971 
1974. So not the first one. That would have been the third one. So he won the no. third and the sixth. All Oh, that's All Japan. Sorry. Oh, so that's the All the, Japan. He won the third and sixth All Japan, as well as the first all uh the first world uh whatever full contact karate championships i don't know why you don't just fucking listen to me <laughs> you don't you, you 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 like question it like i've just made this up he was part of he was part of the kyokushin training group nicknamed the seven samurai which included joko numero he defeated and da, 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 da. anyway i don't go into all this stuff but the uh, early days there's a there's a nice okay. picture there's a good picture of um him I think it's Royama and Azuma. I think it was an all Japan tournament they were where they stood there and they've got the samurai helmet trophies. Oh really? Oh yes, here I found yeah, it. Quite cool, a famous man. picture. That's that's been around a long time. Pull it up for the people. Yeah, I will right now. Pulling it up. Unfortunately it's a shitty version. Let me see if I can find a better version of it. This is the, when I when I say pull it up. It's got to be the instant. Yeah, I'm not ten, your ten, little... Uh, ten minutes, ten minutes. I know you like to think I'm the button pusher, listen, but... <laughs> listen, your internship is coming to an end. You should pull your, back, <laughs> oh, you pull your fucking finger out. Snap. <laughs> uh, I just wanted, for the for the uh, folks, I'd rather give them a better version. I just, I can't believe this is oh, the only version only gonna, I can... They're only going to look at... Yeah, but don't forget, it's a black and white picture. It's from the 70s. All right, whatever. All right, let me pull it up. Scott's looking for a HD Ultra. I definite. Pretty much, yes. I was, actually. That's the shot. That's the one. Quite a famous picture, that is. That's, some, make it that's three very serious You're going to make it right bigger? There. I can't. That's my point. That's what I was trying to say. Well, that's tiny. <sighs> Go on. You don't yeah. say so on the left of it is Royama, Kancho Royama. The middle is Sato. And on the right-hand side is Azuma. Yeah. Legends right there. Three big names there. Three big names. Um, I, will put, I will put this picture in Ronin Life anyway. So you can open it up and you'll have a, a bigger one of it. Yeah, do that. Yeah. Cool. Um, sorry, but I'm not familiar with... I didn't even know he had... Um, I didn't know he had done an offshoot as well. He, yeah, he's got his offshoot. I think everyone that's left the Kyokushin organization have gone and done their own sort of version of it. As, I as so. with um, Kaze, uh, Kazumi, Hajime Kazumi. So the difference though with Kazumi, and this is where I'm wondering with these guys as well. So this, the one that you're just talking about, Sato, I, I'm not, obviously I'm not familiar with it. Again, I implore people, if you do know the style, that you please comment on it. I'm I, not familiar with it, but yeah, I know Sato was a big Chudoka as well. So I'm assuming it, it will have, it'll be Ashihara Engine. That's what I'm wondering. Based. That's, I'm totally wondering that myself. I'm, I'm very, very, very curious now if, if he did that. Um, and and that's where I was going with the uh, Kazumi one. So uh, uh, Hajime Kazumi left uh, Kyokushin, started Kazumi Karate, basically. His own. I am soul, isn't it? Iron Soul is his dojo, was his first dojo. Uh -huh. And uh, he, so now he owns, I think last count I had was about five, six dojos around, around Tokyo area, or around that prefecture area. And um, maybe Todd, you, you might know more around this one than me, and you can comment. Um, but the one thing I do like, and I had, I, I actually put edited together a video on his training before. It also encompasses everything. So to get a, a black belt or, or a shodan certificate under Kazumi, I've seen that test. So it is not, it's stand up to grappling on the ground. It's all incorporated. Everything. All trapping, grappling, takedowns, incorporates all of it. Uh, but then they break it off into separate things too. People concentrate on just knockdown tournament style like Kyokushin. People do more. He has fighters that do MMA, including his brother actually. And, uh, uh, and students who do MMA, um, so yeah, he has he has like full MMA uh, training there with like cage and all that kind of uh, fun stuff. Yeah, but it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's very very he, incorporated. He did a promo video, didn't he? And it was yeah. very MMA ish. Yeah, very very, and um, and he, he but but he still stays traditional. He puts a lot, actually, even more focus on his 
Kion See, so Kata. I, I trained with uh, Kazumi Shian for a, a weekend when he came to Britain. And did what was that like? Time. What was that like? That was completely the opposite to what we thought it was going to be like. So there was a lot of emphasis put on... Um, Iken, Taiki Ken. Yeah, a bit of Taiki Ken movement. Um, mm-hmm. And I noticed Kazumi dropped his punch down and punches from sort of lower down on the waist. What? He doesn't punch from up here. He dropped it down more and he was punching from lower down on the waist. When he was doing Kihong. Yeah. Well, we did, well, that's the thing. We didn't stand in and do loads of Kihong like that. It wasn't like a Kyokushin that you would be used to. And I think it was it was not long after he had separated from Kyokushin Khan. I see. Because he was in Kyokushin. His instructor, uh, Shigirio, uh, Shigirio, um, Oh, I forgot his name. The Champions Dojo. Yeah, I know. I had his brain fired too. I was hoping you were going to come up uh, with it. Uh, a sh- I can see him. I can see his glasses. I can see him. <laughs> uh, passed away. There's a shit, um, sh- 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 isn't it? That's driving me crazy now. Keep talking. I'll find it. Oh, yeah. I'm a- Tell me about yeah, the tournament. Fought- or, I mean, the uh, seminar. Hiroshige. Yes. Hiroshige. Yeah. Say, I am a font of knowledge. Jesus. Hiroshige was the champion's dojo. He was Kazumi's instructor. Um, Hiroshige left IKO uh, and he was with Royama in Kyokushin Khan. Mm-hmm. But they, you know, at this point, Kazumi wanted to retire and wanted to stop sort of doing tournaments and fighting. Yeah. Um, and they were like, well, no, you're the, you need to fight. You're the you're fight fighting team. guy. We need, we need you fighting. Roll that's kick. the big name. You know, some row kicks. Oh, now. Um, so he was like, oh, I don't want to fight. So he separated as well then. And did yeah, his, I heard there's I a little bit more to it. Than, I, I heard there's a little bit more to it. Uh, that, but... Yeah, I'm not getting into the no, the itty nitty gritty bits because people are still alive. Yeah, it's hearsay or whatever. Anyway, yeah. But uh, um, anyway, a lot of respect so, for him. So he, he My come away fighter. from Kyokushin completely. Yeah, it's a technique. I mean, I think one of the most technical fighters out there, if not the most technical, I would say on Matsui and him on par for movement and, and, and being technicians. Mm-hmm. Matsui. Yeah. Incredible technician. I speak whatever you want politically about these organizations, but Matsui was, you uh, can't take that away from him, man. He's like poetry watching that guy, man. Yeah. It, it's more, and I, I think, I think Kazumi was, a little bit more technical on footwork. Yeah, but he he didn't he didn't have Matsui's kicks. No, n- n- well, not many did. But uh, yeah, can you imagine like a good combination of Matsui, Gary O'Neill, and uh, Kazumi? Terry Burgett. Oh my God, that would be unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> he pay face punching, eye gouging, <laughs> oil change. Yeah. <laughs> oil, I come down a bit. Of pow, pow. Not like that. But uh, yeah. yeah, anyway, yes. Hajime so, so Kazumi. Seminar was in Scotland. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, back to the seminar. Yeah. So, so we was... trained two days and it was all based on movement um, and intention and bowing. And bowing? Uh, yeah, we, we went through a thing about where um, you need to bow with intent. If you're, he was saying that there's no intent in what people does. There's no uh, sincerity. Ah, what people do, yeah. they just like. Well, he's like, if you've got proper sincerity, uh, sincerity is that even a word? Sin- yeah, sincerity. Yeah. yeah, if you've got proper sincerity, um, the technique will be better, hmm. or you will be stronger. I think there it, might it be was, some. Uh, there's something to that. I think so because you're it, walking in li- there with a specific mindset. Yeah, but there was also a little bit of. Um, Lost in translation. A little bit of trickery as well involved oh. in it and stuff because because he was getting people to do a sit in Caesar and do the bow, right. um, but he was like if and then he would he would he would push on their back and they'd take their hands off the floor and hold all of his weight, and he was kind of like right if you're not sincere you're going to squash into the floor and he, and he said you know have sincerity have do what you do and then you can hold and they'd sit on people's back and he mm. did it to me. So the first time we'd done it, we bowed, you know, and then he sat me, I crushed down. Then the second time I was like, well, I know what's coming now, so I'm ready for it. And mm-hmm. I braced myself more, and I, I held him up. 
So mm. I was like, ah, it's one of those, one of those little Japanese trickery things, like some of the Tameshiwari kicking the baseball bats that are like made of balsa wood. The special Izami baseball bats that the kids are breaking. <laughs> the special Izami baseball bats. <laughs> yeah, the Pre broken baseball bats. Yeah, not pre broken, just a different wood. It yeah. was it was no Soft hickory wood. American slugger. No, <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to see. If I can choose, the, if I can personally choose the bats and give them to some folks, I would love to see it. <laughs> I would choose four bats, and I'll let you go. There will be a lot more tib and fib breaks in Kyoto. You got that right. You got that right. Use one of the one of the steel ones. Yeah, one of the aluminum bat. <laughs> Give her a go. <laughs> what is that? What is it made of? What? Aluminum. Aluminium. <laughs> <laughs> aluminum. I don't know what aluminum is. Aluminium. <laughs> aluminium. Aluminium. Yeah, whatever. Aluminum. Aluminium. Um, what else we got? Anyway, so yeah, his, his seminar was different, quite different. Um, other break-offs, of, I think we've covered them all, haven't we? Yeah. There will be other ones, that more fairly recent ones as well, uh, and other bits that we don't know about that are smaller. Uh, well, obviously, uh, Kenji Yamaki. Never Kenji heard of him. Kenji Yamaki, he's, uh, he's a big, big Japanese guy. <laughs> he's supposed to be quite quite handy back yeah, in the day. Yeah, he's okay. But again, there's another one, though. Yamaki, Yamaki Dojo. Again, I don't think he does anything strikingly different than Kyokushin, right? I no, I don't. I don't think it's a lot different to Kyokushin. I don't even know if he has that, that the same kata system or grading system. Mm-hmm. I just know his kanji is different, and it is Yamaki Karate. And we talked about Sato Kaikan, who was in the states. Yamaki was in the states for a long time, but he's gone. I believe he's gone back to Japan now. Yeah, he's in Japan right now. <clears throat> Uh, his dojo still operates, though, obviously, in mm. um, in California. Uh, I'm just looking down here through Shindenkai. What is this? Shindenkai. Didn't we not cover that one? This is that, German. Uh, I don't know who this yeah, is. Some, Created uh, by uh, Hamed Sultani, Iranian-German karateka. First-generation yeah. karate. Practice. Founder of Thai Sabaki Method in Iran. Founder of Thai Sabaki Method in Iran. How do you find? How, how are you the founder of Thai Sabaki? Or you mean that, he brought that, it to Iran? Maybe um, these people just make they just they found anything, didn't they? I, I invented karate in in I, Blackwood. Well, I I invented uppercuts. Yeah, well, obviously you copied it off me. I don't think so. I think I invented. That's what I used. I used to love doing that whenever I'd go to seminars, and then they'd add the wrestling and the other stuff and the grappling, and they do something like a throw. I'd be like, that's just Kyokushin, basic Kyokushin one hundred and one. Just copied, copied from Kyokushin. And they're like, that's fuck all the two of Kyokushin. That's fucking ju- No, that's in Kyokushin. <laughs> what are you on about? This it's totally deadpan, Kyokushin. too. Yeah, <laughs> it's like this predates Kyokushin. No, they learned that from Oyama. It's just the same as Oyama told Musashi out sword fight. It's all there. <laughs> they're like, oh my God, what are you on about? I said, it's all, it all comes from Kyokushin. That's the, <laughs> that's the mother art. <laughs> Uh, if we missed any folk, Jesus, we've been going rambling on over an hour with this stuff. Um, if anybody, yeah, if we missed any, let us know. But I'm also curious for the ones that we even talked about. What are the other differences between Kyokushin? Was it were these just political splits or were they actually changes? Was, like Kudo, uh, I can see is you know, it's always going to be politics that as well, and it's half and half as well. I mean, we know. Um, we kind of know why uh, Tadashi Nakamura split away. That yeah. was quite political. Yes. Um, and it was basically Kyokushin is, is what he did, what he went away with. Uh, but yeah, that, that was political. And, and the other reasons you can read it in his book. I was just going to uh, say, his book really outlines it. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and we are, and I like using this term, we are all very fanciful. And we think, you know, oh, Kyokushin and the art and this and that. And so I was the god and, you know, whiter than white, purer than pure. And no one can question him. He was a man the same as every other man. He was a human. So he would have had arguments with other people. Yep. Maybe someone might have fallen out with him. He didn't like a way certain person was doing a certain thing and said, listen, got your ideas up. It's my way or the highway, which it was with Sosai. It was my way or the highway. Or you go. Well, he was building an organization, so he yeah. kind of had building to do that. Building a huge organization. 
Yeah. So yeah, along the way, you know, you can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs or some skulls. Or some skulls. <laughs> so yeah, get in the comments, folks, and uh, talk about your people that you know. Can I show a funny picture? It's off topic, but somebody uh, I saw today and I had to comment on it from my friend. <laughs> It goes back to some of the stuff we were talking about earlier with uh, jiu-jitsu and stuff. I found this hilarious. I really found this funny. So this is on my friend's Facebook. Hey, Arthur, shout out to Arthur. So we got this jiu-jitsu, uh, jiu Mark Cerrone. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark Cerrone says, I walk around every day with no idea what it's like to fear another man. Jiu-jitsu made me like this. Now, I respect that, but it also... You know, I put it down here, I agree, but it also doesn't hurt that he's over 100 kilograms and a killer. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not all based on jiu-jitsu. No, like, look at Mark Cerrone's neck. <laughs> look at the mitts on this guy. <laughs> and, they, you know, I know people that have never had a formal day's training in their life, and they fear no man. Exactly, exactly. So I was, I do love this kind of quote. It's actually kind of cool, but I, I think it would have been better coming from someone who was a little bit more average looking. <laughs> yeah, some <laughs> There's some guy that looks some skinny, seventy kilo guy. Exactly, exactly. Because <laughs> Mark Cerrone looks like he literally just take your head and pop it off like a pop can, just, <laughs> just rip it off. Yeah, <laughs> it's well, fucking you'll hilarious. Have, you'll have people do it, and again, like we were talking about, um, Carolyn, you will have. Just freaky people who are super strong. And yeah. I know guys who were ne never did train them. They never boxed. They never trained. They played a bit of rugby and they were a fucking animal. They could yeah. pick you up and bench press you and throw you over your head. No exactly. problem. Pick you up and smash you at the ground. Yeah. Can't you... punch, but if they get hold of you, they will maul you. Smash, maul. Hulk smash. Yeah, but people, and it is. If they can't believe to literally pick people up and smash them into the pavement, into the concrete. I mean, quite horrific to see sometimes when someone bangs their head. Oh, I've seen that, that twice in my fight. life. Twice in my life I've seen it, and it's horrific. I don't wish it on any. You probably saw that a lot as a doorman. People's you skulls going off the... Yeah, and it's, I'd say to people, that you became, and I've talked about this before, you become desensitized to the violence as well. Yeah. Like I used to cap, used to bang people, like go down, and you do this skull hit the floor. It's like a, it's not so thud. much like a Coke, it, yeah, it's like a watermelony thud I, on the floor. I still remember the first time I saw it, I was outside a bar, quite young. My first start going to bars, and a fight broke out, and a bouncer, a doorman, cracked this fucking guy because he was being, he was being an asshole. Cracked this guy, one shot, square in the head, and the guy just went stiff and just went back. And I'll never forget that sound. There was two things I'll never forget. The sound of his head hitting the concrete, that what you're talking about. It's like weird, dull. It, it, it's a thud. very yeah, it's a dull watermelon -y Yeah, it's thud, watery. But it but it's not it's not like it's not like a coconut. Like a coconut is quite hard and yeah. hollow. It's it, it's it's like what it is. It's like a, it's like a hard thing full of oh, fluid hitting the floor. God, so that creeped me right out, right in the moment. And then a couple seconds later, I saw blood trickling out of this guy's ears. That's never a good sign. Oh my God! As I'll a general remember. rule, if you've got blood coming out of your ears <laughs> or eyes or your eyeballs, you need to go to your nearest medical facility. <laughs> That's a good, good piece of advice. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, people, that could save your life. And another one I saw was a school fight. I don't know if it was junior high or high school. I saw a fight in somebody's face. They fell, and there was almost, it was like a kick, and it was both the kick and then the other side of the head smashed off the curb. So they got it both sides. The kick, because they were on the ground, and the guy yeah. kicked, booted this guy right in the head, and then his head bashed into the. So both of it was a, gross. The kick and the smash off the curb. I don't know what was it worse. Could be it could be a horrific sound. It oh, can be, and it could be Jesus. quite scary. But like I said, it, it did, like I used to ban people and they'd hit the floor and you'd be like, it's his fault. He shouldn't have started the fight. But then like they're still on the floor two minutes later and then you're like, like yeah, oh, shit. I'd, you're like, I don't care. Yeah. And then five minutes and I'm moving. You're like, oh, uh, yeah, well, uh, is he all right? Is he okay? And then you're like, oh my God, I fucking killed him. Oh my God, yeah. oh my God. Then all the fear starts coming in. Well, that goes back full circle to a thing that like, I really dig about jujitsu too. Like, you know, if you could subdue somebody without causing that kind of damage, that's ultimate fucking 
that's you know that's one yeah. step away from walking away. It it's certainly certainly um, a valuable tool in your arsenal. Yeah, you don't you to know, have it in your as, back pocket. As percussionists, as strikers, all we've got is striking. Really, take yeah. boxes and boxes. All they've got is striking. I told you that's what drove me to jujitsu. Like, is that is that part? Yeah, yeah. It, it's and though it is in Kyokushin, we do have the grabs and the holes and the throws, and it is in. It was a big part of karate. Tegumi grappling. It was mm-hmm. it was part of karate mm-hmm. that's been lost. It is nice to have, uh, and I would. This is what I would say to people: do Kyokushin to get you. I do a good Kyokushin, a good dojo. To mm-hmm. have your fitness, your strength, your conditioning, and power. Perseverance. There is not a lot of other fighting disciplines that could compete with the just True. pure power generation of Kyokushin. True. The kicking and punching. True. You judo and jujitsu. Mm. You got all bases covered. Yeah, 100%. Totally agree. And Aido, in case. You get into a fight and they've got a sword and you take it off and then you can use it. That's true. And you should Save carry a sword anyway, really. Always. Yeah. Do you not are you not allowed to carry the Daisho in in yeah, we just hide it. We just hide it. Ah, I mm. I've been looking for a walking stick sword king. <laughs> One of them. As I'm getting older now, I think I could pull a walking stick off. As <laughs> and a, you need a fur a, coat, like a little bit of fur on you. A, li- a little cape, like a Malfoy. <laughs> like Malfoy Kane, I can have a snake on the end of it. You pull it out, and it'd be a sword. That would suit uh, me. Let's wrap this. Let's up. wrap this baby up. Get in the comments, folks. Put all the comments in. Like we said, tell us all about what's going on. Tell us about your styles. Yeah, I definitely want to know, and I, and I'm not just saying just just to get comments. I mean, I want comments. Yeah, no, but just this, I, we want. I legitimately want to know. Yeah, uh, and other people come on. Other people get. We've got our same core. Commenters are fantastic. That support Who we show. love. Comment. <laughs> we love you all. Um, but get you know if get other people involved to talk about things. What we want to do is we want to create discussion. Yeah. That's what we want. We don't, don't care about about comments and and views and stuff. We want to create discussion with like minded people. Absolutely. And on, even on that note, like you know, I, I it's. Honestly, YouTube is not the best platform for it because it forces people to be signed in to to comment and to share. Yeah, it's and, ridiculous. And, yeah, and people... we share all over Facebook, but, exactly. but and and this is why we're missing out loads of stuff because you exactly. can't from Facebook. You yeah, can't it's, comment. It's, it's it's such a drag. You can't even like. It's a drag, but you know it is. It's what we got. So please, if you can comment, and I'm also I was going to mention to you too. I'm also going to set up um, an account for us on Rumble. And because uh, a lot of people are migrating over to Rumble, what the hell is Rumble? See, there you go. So Terry's not. Listen, that... I've only, I've only just fucking got onto YouTube. <laughs> Never mind something else now. Like you put me on. What did you? What did you put me on? What was this message thing we're on? Signal. Signal. <laughs> I only messaged two fucking people on Signal. You and Brid. <laughs> I've had to, I've had to download it, put it on my phone. I only speak to you and Brid on Signal. Well, you need to. Get people. The on government it. is recording everything. Well, they are. Everything's recorded. I never use Messenger. I don't talk to anyone on Messenger. I know lots of people do, but I don't talk to. Anyone. I use Telegram That's and Signal. Telegram and Signal. It's only a matter of time. And it, and if the government want what's in Signal bad enough, they'll get a court order and they'll have it. Fair enough. But for now, I'm good to go. All right. On that, on that note, <laughs> do your magic. We will next week. We're going to go through the Kyokushin organizations. Oh, that's going all to be a long six, show. All, <laughs> all 6,000 of them. Yeah. Make yourself something to eat. Get yourself yeah, a, a yourself, drink, a coffee or something. And have a sit down. Yeah, it's so going to we'll be about... Do our normal, we'll maybe do our we'll do it in three off. parts. <laughs> it's part of a series. Yes, it's a series. <laughs> We'll do we'll it in alphabetical do, um, order. <laughs> we do the main ones, though. We're not going to go to every oofling dung far off, like made <laughs> no. up, whatever. Uh, but we'll go through all the main organisations, and there are more popping up. People yeah. with big heads, and we'll go, and we if if we can remember, because this will require a little bit of research. Yeah. More than Shitopedia. Yeah. We will um, go through some of the ones that are not so legit as well, that have just been strung up from whatever and, and whatever. Fair enough. 
All like right. This I, I like this IFK thing that's popped up out of nowhere. I know. Right out of nowhere. <sighs> Okie doke then, folks. Something to look forward to next week. Subscribe, like, do all the bits. Touch all the bits. <laughs> touch all your bits. <laughs> touch, all your bi- touch all your bits. And everyone else's bits. <laughs> Cat. Yeah.